Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the 9x90 show. Um, usually, we feature the most incredible startup founders from around the world. Today, we are going to switch things up, and I am actually going to introduce you to someone that I consider a personal mentor and coach of mine. We have the same knee injury, so I think that was like the foundation of our friendship was you don't have any ligaments in your knee either. Me too. <laughs> we should be best friends. So a lot of our calls start with, how are you surviving the hurricane? How is your knee? Have you tried this pain management thing? Um, but he is absolutely an amazing guy. You guys are going to just love getting to know him over the next few minutes. Um, what we're going to do, and the reason he's on the show is actually he has done some remarkable things in the philanthropic world. Uh, for those of you who do not know, most of you do, but my family has been in Rotary since 1958. There are a lot of the plaques. Um, so we we just, we just love working with Rotarians around the world who are bringing good life-changing technology to remote villages. They're bringing economic empowerment projects to different places around the world. Um, they're just, they're really, they're such a catalyst for society moving forward in a positive direction. Um, very rarely do we get Rotarians onto a show like this, but coach Dan Rizzi is here and he's making it happen for you guys, which is amazing because his year is so busy and so packed with all the amazing projects they're doing this year. So there you go. Dan, you want to tell them a little bit about yourself? Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Dan Rizzi. I've been around South Florida since 1965. <clears throat> I've been a Rotarian for the past eight years. Um, I've been involved with service work since probably the 1970s with coaching the Optimist Club in Miramar and going through that for 14 to 20 years on the board for 14 years. Then I became a master, uh, a Masonic master at Daniel Beach Lodge. And now I'm with the Rotarians. Um, service work is important to me. Giving back is what I was always taught to do. And that's what I try to do every day of my life. Yes. So, right now you are leading one of the biggest clubs in this area how many members do you have you have like a hundred something right we have 105 now we just picked up five new members through the pandemic we lost a lot of people a lot of those people in during the pandemic moved away or passed away so we lost a bunch of people we were probably up to when i came into the club 170 but over the years attrition's taken its toll and um we're still 105 members right now and we're growing again like I said, we just put five new members on. They just went through what we call the blue badge. Um, and now they, they're they Rotarians that are doing a lot of work this year. They, they really stepped up to the plate as brand new people because they enjoy what we do. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had a few of them send me flyers like, hey, could you just proofread this really quick? <laughs> Tell me what you would change here. How do I phrase this? But uh, I'm I'm excited to see people passionate about learning how to step into and grow into the roles. I, 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 those of you who know me, I'm know that I'm very passionate about training the next generation of leaders. And uh, you have some amazing emerging leaders at your club. So yeah. um, you have a few different pretty cool projects going on right now. Do you want to talk about what some of those are? Yeah, we have quite a few projects. Uh, of course, we're helping with the hurricane relief, which we're doing through uh, our district. Um, and try to help the people in uh, Western Florida and also in the Carolinas because Rot Rotary is an international club. I believe we have like 43,000 clubs nationwide and probably close to 3,000 members. Um, and at this point, we have some projects going on. Some of the projects that we have right now that we're doing is our general projects are like you know, helping Broward Foundation, Educational Foundation, which is collecting school supplies. Hispanic Unity, building vegetable gardens for the kids so they learn how to grow their own vegetables and, and be able to sit there and survive. Uh, Jacob Shoes, just collecting sneakers or shoes that are still worth, worth worthy to wear, just cleaning them up and giving them to the needy. Our toy drive every year for many, many years uh, have, we've usually oh, the toy over, drive is over 500, so 500 toys easily. And we, we, we distributed them to five different areas. Ann Stoke Center, which is for children, Children's Diagnostic and Treatment Center, Healthy Mothers and Healthy Babies. Well, let, let's health. pause for a second. Let's pause for a second. So let, just tell people about what you're doing with the toy drive. We basically 
take these toys to these children that are that have that are kind of needy. They're not saying, you know, and basically just giving them something to lift their life during the holidays. These yeah. kids don't get what we give our kids because we're lucky enough to be able to do that. Um, and our, our goal is to help them enjoy life a little bit with a, a toy here or a bike. Um, and even the elderly, we help, we take it to, we take stuff to the elderly. The biggest thing the elderly love is, is stuffed animals. <laughs> and it's amazing what, you know, they, they hug them, they, you know, and it's amazing the, the little things and those little things do so much for certain people. And it's yes. amazing to watch their faces and see them smile. That's one of uh, what we do every year. So the for those of you who are tuning in from Europe, um, I know that there are a lot of government programs that are in charge of taking care of those on the outskirts of society. Uh, we do not have this similar things in the US and that's where Rotary comes in and kind of bridges the gap and takes care of those who are on the outskirts of society. And um, in, in certain parts of the world, you have different gift giving festivals at different times of year. What uh, Dan Rizzi's uh, um, disc discussing right now with the holidays, our gift giving season in the US is in December. Um, it overlaps with Christmas time. So there's a lot of marketing material, videos, movies that these children see where they see kids opening gifts and they're not going to get something. So they feel even more like they're on the outskirts of society. So that's where this Rotary Club just comes in and bridges that gap and makes them to feel like they're worthy because they're these young children. They're seeing other people swapping gifts, having this joyous time. And this club comes in and helps those on the outskirts of this local community to feel included as well. So, the but something that's very fun that they do with this is like, it's a prestigious club, okay? So they have architects, they have what? The, the head of one of the hosp local hospitals is a member right. there. The head of one of the most prestigious hotels, like Heiko de Bracco is there. Um, so they have very prestigious, like, top-notch professionals there and they will take turns dressing up as santa claus to walk around the meeting and like jo joke with everyone to get them to participate in uh the toy drive but then you also have thanksgiving you do something at thanksgiving as well again we, coming into the outskirts of society and bringing them in what is it we partner with uh, for, uh the presbyterian church in fort lauderdale and we help them with also a donation to help them buy the turkeys um, they buy the turkeys and we go over there and we actually pack the turkeys with all the fixings. They get everything for a dinner. And usually it's a, it's a 12 pound turkey, which is a good turkey for, for an average family. Um, we pack it up and we usually this we're servicing about 700 families that are, are well, you know, they, they need this little boost. Again, it's just giving them a, a, a little understanding that people, people care. This is again, like every country has their own feast. Right. Some point throughout the year, every single country has some sort of festival where everyone participates in some sort of feast. So right. be it Sukkot, be it, um, what is it, Diwali? There's different holidays in every country around the world where people get together and they celebrate the harvest of the local crops, which was a huge deal hundreds of years ago when you had your food cycles depended on a harvest and today it's just an amazing tradition so once again this rotary club comes in with 100 members strong uh some very powerful people in their club and they put together set meals for 700 different families in this local area so that they can participate in another amazing holiday and again this is in conjunction or partnership with a major Presbyterian church in Fort Lauderdale that is does amazing work in the community themselves. Yes, and then you the next thing on your list was um, the the medical supplies, the medical equipment for children. Uh, medical equipment. What we have there's a couple of different things that we do. Right now, what we're doing is we're working on it's a fundraiser, and what we did is come up with our president last year with another member of our club came up with the idea to try to put a bus on the streets yes. and what the bus is for is to pick up homeless and take them to 20 different facilities to help them get help whether it's medical whether it's trying to get a license whether it's trying to get even a an id so they can go around and, and maybe get a job 
getting them off the streets and helping them get off the drugs, the alcohol, helping families get off the streets and maybe find an apartment. These are the things we're doing without, but they can't get from point A to point B. They, they can't even afford a bus pass. So one of the projects is trying to put a bus on the streets. And it's been about a year, but we've actually come in close to getting it done. Um, we actually have a partner now that pledged to give us $20,000. That's Florida Blue. We also have um, Fellowship Recovery, which is Rick's organization. They just they donated fifteen thousand. And we have some other ones coming up that haven't. They've they've said they're going to give us the money, but haven't set up side and said yes, this is what we're giving you. So we pretty much will be bringing up and and getting together seventy thousand dollars for the project, so we can put this bus on the street, and it's going to be manned and. Everybody that comes on the bus is going to sit there and have to talk to the person on the bus and say, why, why are you here? Who are you? Get documentation of who they are. And then what are your needs? So we can tell them, okay, this is a stop you have to get off at. Because they don't know. And there's like 20 stops. They're going to make two to three rounds every day. And we have Florida Blue is excited about it. The city is excited about it. And hopefully we can sit there and put this together and take it to the, the, the state to get the funding for the rest of the year and years to come. That's our goal. So um, for those of you who have been to cities where you see homelessness and you're like, oh my God, the homeless shelters aren't working. That's right. Putting a roof over someone's head only gets them so far. So what this Rotary Club has done and they've been able to do because they have some brilliant economists in there who understand societal structures, um, they have come up with a very specific plan of what are the point what are the steps that someone who is homeless drug addict on the streets what steps do they need to take to become a functioning member of society again and then they built a bus route around that so just to wrap your heads around it um i don't know some of you may have heard of new york city relief that was founded by one of my father's friends in new york city where they do something similar they bring a bus to different areas that have a high homeless population twice a week every single week they give them a hot meal and then as soon as they're ready to fill out job applications and get off the streets they come on the bus and they have someone sitting there with them helping them to get plugged back into society and become a functioning member of society um sitting there and giving things to the homeless it only gets them so far giving them the tools they need and e economically empowering them to get off the streets is a total game changer and it's a long-term sustainable solution um if any of you are interested in donating to this you can reach out to me and i will connect you with dan rizzi i believe that naming rights are still available for the bus if they write a check they can have their their logo printed on the side of the bus correct i believe so uh you know we'd have to see how far and how what kind of room but we yep. will try to accommodate anybody that wants to donate to this and make this thing work because i think it's it's an important factor because right now we've already start we started basically there's another function of this that we've started with the city. And what it is, is that we open up libraries twice a month and we have coffee and cake and stuff like that. And we invite the homeless to come in. And what they do is uh, they'll let us know what their needs are. And some of them get bus passes so they can go to a medical facility or they can go get rehab. Um, they've gone to Rick's facility, which is fellowship recovery. And there's been several of them that have recovered. Some of them are already working in, in and get with jobs and have their own places. And it's amazing in a year's time, 12 to 15 are off the streets and have recovered. And that's an amazing figure when you look at the, you know, how long it takes to have somebody recover and get back to normal. So it's not something that happens overnight. Um, that's part of the programs that we're putting together. Uh, homelessness right now on the street, remember, Florida has a law now that we can't have, you're not supposed to sleep on the streets anymore. So where do these people go? And that's that's the goal of what a lot of organizations in this area, including LifeNet, which we just had her uh, speaker, the CEO this week at our club to talk about what's going on, and they don't know where to put them. That's the problem. So it's yeah. it's a good, it's, it's one of the starting factors of putting this together. And there's a lot of caring people that are really pushing this and behind it. And then you also have, you're doing a lot for uh, women and children's health. Yes, uh, I guess, how do I want to put that? Um, 
we try to sit there and back the back anybody that comes in and says, okay, we're the, we're an organization, but we need X Y Z because we're lacking diapers, we're lacking, you know, anything of that nature. We need clothes, and when they come to us, we try to sit there and, and accommodate them the best we can with food drives, with clothing drives, and that's something that really helps us because there's been in the past where they wanted like um, business suits because they were taking these people out, dressing them up and putting them in front of somebody to get a job because they don't have clothes. They can't go out and get a job, whether it's a my man or a woman. My neighbors and I donated to that. <laughs> I'm in a wealthy Jewish neighborhood and I told everyone, hey, we need suits for young people. Boom. <laughs> I, I did not expect to have so much professional attire at my front door, but yeah. It's very important to get them and they feel better when they dress up like that and try to go in front of somebody and say, I can do this job and try to get some way to make a living. So that's part of what we try to do for in that respect. It's been and that's in conjunction with the city too. City of Fort Lauderdale has been an amazing partner in a lot of this stuff. We have George Arushka is one of our long line members who's worked with the city and works with this type of programs. So he'll let us know what what they need, and we're always trying to help them as much as we can. There's yes. a bunch of other projects too. We have another project that we're working on. It's called Lucky Horse. It's a farm that has comfort animals to help people with disabilities. They can come to the farm, or they can take the animals to a site so these these people with disabilities get to play with them and, and pet them, and it kind of calms them down. And so the doctors can work with them a lot easier. In fact, the owner of this is a doctor that does psychology and, work, and works with these type of, uh, doesn't matter if it's man, woman, man, woman, children, doesn't matter. They she's all not just a doctor. Comfort. She she went to Harvard. Okay. So she's like among the most, the most brilliant and brightest women you'll ever meet. And she looks like she just walked off the cover of a Vogue magazine. Like she's beautiful. She's brilliant. Yeah. And basically what we did this year, they needed a lot of work on the fences around there. And through a contact of mine, um, which happens to be Home Depot, because Home Depot works with us in another project I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, they came out several times and we just were, they were awarded a grant for $25,000 for materials. And not only that, they're bringing out their staff to help put and, and fix the fences. And this is going to be one of our projects. We'll go out there and help with them as a service project from our Rotary Club and any Rotary Club that wants to come out. So that's one of the things that we, we've accomplished this year. Uh, and it's amazing because getting grants from big corporations is not easy. No, not at all. <laughs> and again, it's it's not just one store. It's actually the stores in Dayton and Palm Beach County. It was like 15 stores that came together and put grants in their stores out for the same thing and it added up to twenty five thousand dollars um yes that that's that's just incredible being able to to have a valuable resource like that coming to help with things that a brilliant doctor would, would not be expected to know and it would be sad to see her lose the efficacy of her projects just because she didn't have that resource so again, bridging the gap, filling in the needs of those, helping society to continue to run smoothly, helping to get certain people within society back into the fold to become intelligent, contributing members. Um, it's really incredible what, what you guys are doing. Do you have, uh, is there, are there any other projects you wanted to discuss? One of the biggest ones that we do every year, and we've been doing it for over 30 years, is called Challenge Air. We partner with Challenge Air, which is a, an organization that does this throughout the United States. It's a project that we take special needs children and introduce them to flight. Some of these children never, never would ever believe, go up in a plane, never would have that opportunity to feel what flight's all about. So we're blessed this past year, we put 84 children up in planes and in conjunction with 19 pilots that donated their planes and their fuel, and they do this every year. They come back every year because they love looking at these kids on the planes and getting off the planes with smiles that you really see a child in that, that type of situation smile. Um, we also have people that come in and sponsor. Caraba is one of them. They give us 250, they feed 250 people every single year. Uh, Sugar Snaps, which are is a small organization, but 
the kids of this organization, the parents have these two daughters that come out every year, and it helps with taking uh, cupcakes and letting the kids decorate the cupcake, cupcakes and, 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 and cookies. It's amazing. Um, Home Depot comes out and puts uh, a table out and brings all the stuff to sit there, like build a, a plane or uh, a, something else. And the kids sit there and put it together, they hammer it together with their parents and paint it. And it's amazing to see what they do. We have somebody comes out and donates, a, they have simulators. The kids can get in front of them with help and see what, what it is to fly a plane. Uh, and it goes on and on. Um, it's just an amazing event. Last year we had 160 volunteers just to volunteer to, to help us run this event. It's a big event. And thanks to our major partner, which is Vanyan Air, which donates a major hangar every year, and they and their staff, because their staff runs, uh, they're out there taking make sure the planes are coming in and out in time, and, and there's no issues. We also work with the tower, and so it's a big, big operation. And we just started the operation last week with our first meeting. So this is a this is like three three months before to to work on this to get it done. It's just amazing. And anybody who wants to come and visit and see what it's all about, you'll be in awe about these kids and their smiles. We have kids come back every year. We have one kid that's, his name is Malachi. He's 21 now, going to be 22 this year, I'm sure. But he kind of timed out, but he started coming at five years old. An amazing gentleman, uh, amazing kid. And we actually were able to get him up last year after everybody left and one of the pilots says, let's go. Take, I'll take you up. So he actually went up this year again. He's an amazing kid. His mother's amazing. And she says, as long as you have it here, we're going to we'll come and stop by and say hello. So this is what we get back. The love from people that need a little bit of love themselves. That's yeah, absolutely. And, and that's just another amazing example of how Rotary finds unique ways to solve societal problems like for there. There's an increasing number of children coming out with autism and people are so quick to disregard them and they're brilliant at math they're brilliant at art they're brilliant at specific things and when you find people who will take that time to sit down with them and figure out what they're brilliant at and help them to cultivate those skills they take off they can be remarkable professionals oh, yeah. um, and here Rotary comes in with this amazing project and shows them, look, like this might have been scary, but look at how amazing it is. And just helps their brain to understand that there's certain ways that they can be exposed to new experiences. And it doesn't have to be terrible and traumatizing. And it primes them to go out and try other new things so they can have the opportunity to and the desire and the motivation to go out and try new things until they find what their superpower is. And they're able to become a contributing member of society rather than just being another outcast. Yeah, and one of the other parts, basically the city of Fort Lauderdale is amazing because they bring out the dogs, uh, the horses, uh, the motorcycles, and the kids love that. Um, and it's just something, that's another part of what, how the kids get joy. And that's what it's all about. Because they're able to go out and pet the dogs, they're able to sit there and, and pet uh, the horses, and it's just a, a great event. And that's I've I've enjoyed it since the day I started going there. And I'm one I'm one of, uh, one of the uh, coordinators. We also do some fun things too. We just had a run it back our, our, our pic, yearly picnic, and we had a ball. It was you know a nice place. We had it on the beach. Um, it was a beautiful day. It was windy, breezy, so it wasn't hot. And you know, we try to sit there and do fun things too. Oh no, you you totally you have the best holiday party, the best Christmas party, the I've best induction up. I've ever been to. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm in my mid 30s, but because of the family I was born into, I attended my first formal Rotary event when I was one, and it was featured in a newspaper. So like, <laughs> I have gone to way too many formal Rotary events throughout my life. I remember when I was a child, I didn't realize it wasn't normal to go to a different black tie dinner every single night in December. So I just knew every year in December, we had to, as a family, we had to go and we had to go to all these black tie events for all the different Rotary clubs in the area, all the different charities in the area. 
but they they were fun. But then you go to the Fort Lauderdale holiday party, and oh my God, the the venue is stunning. Yeah, well, this year we're having a Heiko's place, which is an amazing hotel. It's a oh, I love Heiko hotel. And yeah. actually, we're going to have a fun time because we're not, you know, we're bringing in the ugly sweater. We're bringing in <laughs> karaoke and just a couple other things because the first hour or so that's what we want to do. And um, so these are things instead of having a dress up stuffy affair, we want to have a fun affair. And that's the, this year's venue. So uh, it's going to be a nice affair and it's going to come and it's coming up on the 1st of December. And you all know Heiko. You've met him before. He came on. Um, he is the executive vice president of La Solas Company. Um, he is the one that I joke is like my German older brother. He's like very, very, he always wears very fun clothes. Um, one time I had to go to this event and I was asked to sit next to the gentleman, like it was assigned seating. I had to sit next to this gentleman who managed 48 billion in assets. And I was like shaking. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, terrified. I called Heiko for my pep talk. <laughs> I was like, Heiko, what do I do? And he was like, Adi, you're fine. You've got this. You do this, you do this, you do this. He gave me the pep talk. So I was like ready to go in. He's like that cool older brother that like, you know, in the like the superhero in the movies where they have that advisor they go to, that's Heiko's another one of those people. So I'm glad that you're doing the event with him. He's just, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we have two members that, uh, that are, that run hotels and we try to split between them every year. Um, there's a lot of other things that we do, including this year, we, we did something different at, at one of our lunches. We, uh, we had uh, Rotarians on a Rotarians, which basically brought back so many older people. They're still, involved, still members, but they don't come. And we had a bunch of other, we had 160 people show up at this at a luncheon. And it was amazing because we honored some of the people that have done a lot in society to help people uh one of them was a doctor he's an amazing person he actually still goes back to, to honor and help his people in turkey there's a lot of there was four people we honored this year and then we just recently did something at the broward health now manny is a member he's the ceo of broward health here at medical center and he actually put on a dinner for us because it was an event to honor members who have over 10 years as a Rotarian, with the oldest one uh, being there 15 years in our club. So this is a, a little bit of the funnest, a little bit nicer things that we do and have to try to have fun and be also honor the people that service our communities. Remember, we're a club of service above self, and that's the key to what we do. And that's what we work, we work towards. Yes. So um, some of you know, this playbook came out this week. Uh, it's a project that Sarah Wagner and I worked on, uh, president, Rotary International president this year, uh, Stephanie Urchek, Dr. Stephanie Urchek. Yes, she's so cool. She's a doctor. Um, anyways, we came out with this playbook, uh, how to make your Rotary club district region, uh, an epicenter of society. So if you're listening to what Dan is talking about, and you're like, oh my God, I don't even know where to begin. This is a great place to start. Uh, it will not bring you to his level by like right now, like in five minutes. It does take time to get to be the type of crux in society that Dan is. But this is a great place to start because it helps you to connect with the types of collaborative, brilliant um, professionals who help your club to become an epicenter in society and to become a, a place that is a catalyst for change and drives your local society in a positive direction. So if you're someone who's been sitting there saying, how do I get my club to be like Dan's? You can call him, you can text, maybe. Can they call you? Yes. Email me and I will ask if it's okay. I will be his gatekeeper and maybe give you his phone number. Um, <laughs> Not a problem, I'm there to help. <laughs> <laughs> but if you need this playbook, I will uh, add the link to where you can download your own copy in the notes. You can ask questions about that. You can then ask Dan questions about how to uh, get on his level. Um, Dan, thank you so much for your time and everything. Is there is there anything else you wanted to say? No, just thank you for taking your time to put this together because I believe it's going to be amazing to for other people to see what experiences we've had together and, you know, in, in your life and my life so thank you oh absolutely yeah um some of you know i i uh i i go to people like dan for advice when i'm like what do i do next uh 
having people like Dan Rizzi and other uh, Rotarians in your in your black book to be able to call on for guidance and advice in your professional career is an absolute game changer. So if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and you're like, look, I am at the top of my game. I have no one to look up to. I feel lost. Join Rotary. Call, find people like Dan. Call them. Um, yeah, I'll go on an international speaking tour. I'll get more stalkers. And then I call someone like Dan and they're like, it's okay, kid, you got this. And that just, it changes your life. So not, not only does joining Rotary help to help you to change the society, it also changes you along the way. Correct. Anyways, all right. Thanks, coach. Thank I'll you. See you back Thank online. You. <laughs> Thank you. Take care. Bye. Talk to you. Be good. You too.